All right, in today's episode of I Hate When Stuff Breaks, this is the second latch that is broken in, I'm going to say, a week and a half. This is the, the uh, tip-out windshield latch, and what it does, comes in like this, and it's a compression fit, so it latches down and snaps in. Well, guess what happens when it's really cold outside? It breaks these latches off of them. I'm going to convert this over from a plastic piece that uh, is definitely highly affected by cold temperatures to an aluminum piece. But in uh, my normal fashion, I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet, but I have started with making a aluminum piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill them out. And from here, I don't have a clue what I'm gonna do next. So I just know that I need to get this bolted down and then try and come up with some kind of latch system that doesn't break. Now's when I have to sit back and actually think and uh, look at the mechanics of all this and see where I really want to go and what direction I want to go with this to uh, try and come up with a better way. This is not a good way at all. What I'm gonna do is make a latch similar to what this does, but not a compression fit, and it will be out of aluminum, and it'll be a much thicker rib that stands up. So I've got a block of aluminum here, and after I machine this thing down, and it always starts with a blueprint, this particular area here will be pocketed out. If you look at this one, it'll have a pocket through it where that handle will go down through the center of that. So that'll be pocketed out down there. And then in the middle of it, it'll have another pocket through here and over on this side. So it'll be completely cleaned out all the way through. So when I pull this down, the handle will drop through what is pocketed out here and this nub and this nub will rest down inside of that. piece all machined up and I need to figure out now I've got to uh, bolt it down to this plate and it's gonna get bolted down here but that will go down in there like that and that is what contains it so I don't need any kind of substantial latch whatsoever to hold that in I just need something to either keep this from lifting up or this either one of these surfaces I need to create something off of this pocket here or this bracket that I made to keep that from popping up because of the spring. Uh, I don't think I want to take the spring out of it because then when you ride down there with the windshield all the way open this would just dangle down here like this without a spring. So it needs that spring in there and I think that I'll be able to simply come up with something for this here just to latch that in and Boy, that is just a rock solid mount now. So we'll get this all done, figured out how it bolts down. And I'll take and uh, make all these corners so they're not real sharp. And then I'll probably powder coat this thing and be done with it. And no more headaches. So stick around and uh, see what I come up with for a latch on that. If you would, don't forget, hit that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe while we're uh, at a break here for more thinking on this thing. All right, well, we are 100% bolted in now. So with this setup, I've got my uh, screws down in there and they are a uh, countersunk quarter 20. 
tapped into this plate here, I had to put all four of these plate bolts on first or in first, and then I bolted this on. So it's not that huge of an ordeal. Um, I can't think of any reason this would ever need to come off again. Not like the other plastic one that keeps breaking, but uh, if it does need to come off, just take these two bolts out and then I can remove the four outer bolts. So like I said, it's 100% bolted in now and this latch comes down, pops in there nice, real smooth, just like the way you'd want it. And there's just enough compression there that it, it just barely holds that. So that's fine. And then you can move this and pop it out to the next set here. So you've got that, that vent opening. So in essence, I've created a better latch, something that uh, works the same, but uh, still utilizes both the factory uh, positions, fully closed and partially open. So now I guess I'm at, on a quest to come up with something that straddles over this and keeps this from popping up out when you're hitting bumps or whatever. But like I said, there's hardly any pressure on that at all. You just need something to keep that from coming out. And then when you've got it fully closed, it's even smoother in that position. So I think we are 90% there. Just need to come up with something to hold this latch in, in place so it doesn't pop up out of there. It's New Year's morning, so Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you guys all have a great New Year. And uh, this morning, we're out here bright and early back in the garage. Got it cleaned up from all the uh, fabrication tools that I was using and have converted over now to do the powder coat of the hood latch, or excuse me, the windshield latch. Uh, got them all sandblasted up, and I like to sandblast anything that I powder coat. It, uh, in my opinion, it helps the powder coat adhere better, cleans the surface really good, and just seems to give it a better all around long lasting uh, effect for the powder coat. So got it in the, the uh, powder coat booth here and got the oven back out, which most of you have seen if you watch any of my channel. And I will show you what I eventually ended up with on this for the latch mechanism. And as you can see, there's a hole inside on each side. I've got a pin that I'm just going to be putting through there. It's a, uh, it's a ball plunger type of uh, locking pin. Pretty simple. I wanted to go the route of the simplest, easiest, and in my opinion, cheapest and strongest way. And that was to put a pin straight through it to where it holds that latch down. And I will show you guys that when it's uh, completed here. But uh, I think by the end of the day... We will have a uh, final completed product with a working latch. So stay tuned, we'll get this powder coated up and on the machine. All right, got them both powder coated and as you can see before they're baked, They've got a hazy, grainy look to them. Almost like it's a fuzzy look to them before they go into the oven. And when they are uh, hit with the heat, why then it does, and I don't know exactly what the heat does to it, but it almost separates it and gives it a 
a glossy, semi-glossy textured look. So let's get them in the oven and then I'll show you what they look like when they come out. So when you actually uh, powder coat things, a lot of times the powder does not look like when it's applied, what it looks like when it's actually gone through its heat process. All right, they are fresh out of the oven and you can see that nice little textured or wrinkle look they have and they're cooled down enough to, to handle. And that's the other part. Let me focus it here. It turned out really nice as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them uh, bolted together and then onto the machine. Well, there you have it. It's all bolted on, finished, complete. It's nice and secure. And if you look at the uh, original factory plastic one, and again, that's where that one broke at. Yes, they are kind of similar in design, but the concept of it is completely different. Where this one was a compression fitting on the handle that came down into it off of the two different nubs, this one drops in and because I don't have the pin yet, it's on order. Just to show you guys what how, or how this works is, I just got a 3 8 bolt, but it's gonna be the same concept where the pin will go through and it'll have uh, two little ball bearings on there and, and a depression type pin on the end that releases the ball bearings. And you will just slide it in and it, it will latch with the ball bearings on that end of it. So just to show you real quick, Pull the windshield down and drop it in. Put the pin through and that's how that latches. It is in there nice and secure. Doesn't rattle, doesn't move. Um, if I wanna go to the partially opened windshield, lift this up, move it to that position, drop it in, push the pin in. Now one thing that I will do with the pin that I ordered is it's got a little uh, ring on the end of it. And I will put a tether on that pin and probably put it under one of the bolts. And I think I'll put it on this bolt up here so that if for some reason I pulled it out and fumbled it, it wouldn't fall down or out or on the floor or whatever. It'll stay there and always stay here at the machine so it can't get uh, misplaced. But the reality of uh, the pin, it is the the strongest, most secure thing that uh, I could come up with. And uh, I think that uh, this is gonna actually work out phenomenal. No more broken latches, no more frustration or aggravation of uh, going out and replacing them and waiting for new ones to show up. So I guess uh, with that being said, if you really like the machining aspect of all this, and that's the first time I've really done any videos with you guys on using my uh, my benchtop mill there for machining, I guess let me know if you like those kind of videos as well. So thank you and we'll see you on the next one.